If health and safety laws were in operation in the 19th century, the man who made these gadgets would have lost his job a dozen times at least. We're here in the Science Museum in St. Patrick's College, Maynooth, home to many of the devices developed by Father Nicholas Callan, one of the great figures of Irish scientific history. He was a loud man, educated in Dundalk, and he came to be a seminarian here in 1816, just a few decades after the foundation of the seminary. One of the teachers who inspired him most in this place was a Dr. Cornelius Denver, who was the professor of natural philosophy. Natural philosophy was the name that they gave at that time to what we would call today science. All the seminarians here studied science as part of their training. They were to give glory to God, not only in their lives of prayer, but also in their study of the created world. After his ordination, Father Callan went on for further studies in Rome, in theology. But alongside his theological studies, he was keeping up to date with the latest researches on electricity and magnetism, work being carried out by people like Galvani and Volta. When he came back to Ireland, he was perfectly placed to apply for the job of Professor of Natural Philosophy, made vacant by the resignation of Dr. Denver. He got the job and he held it for nearly 40 years. Apart from teaching though, he was incredibly active in research, especially in the area of electromagnetism. In that field, he developed some of the most advanced devices of the period, and he shared his research with international associations of scientists. Among the most impressive of his inventions was this massive electromagnet. He had it made with the help of James Briody, who was the local blacksmith. It's a massive iron rod, six feet in height, wrapped in copper wire. And when a current, an electrical current, is applied to the copper wire, the iron becomes powerfully magnetic. So Father Callan would use this to test the strength of the batteries that he made himself. With the strongest of the batteries, this electromagnet was capable of lifting two tons of metal. An extraordinary feat. Father Callan's most famous invention, though, was the induction coil. It was made possible by advances in the study of electricity by Michael Faraday, who was working at the same time in England. So in the experiments of Faraday, it became clear that the production of electromotive force depended in part on the rate of change of magnetic flux. So what Father Callan did was, he invented a device that would rapidly break an electrical current and therefore produce a rapidly changing magnetic field. And this could produce huge voltages when applied to induction coils like this one that he had made. Many of them are made of thousands of meters of very, very, very fine wire in several different coils. With induction coils like this one, Father Callan was able to produce really very large electrical sparks. The largest of them was 15 inches in length. So physicists today calculate that this meant that he was producing a voltage of 600,000 volts, which was the highest artificial voltage produced to that point in history and wasn't bettered until several decades later. What about health and safety then? Well, one of the things that Father Callan did to test the electricity he was producing was to invite his students, the seminarians, to come up to be shocked. And perhaps surprisingly, they did volunteer. Father Callan in his notebook, he marks down the effects on the seminarians and then he figures out roughly the strength of the voltage that was produced. How far back was this person thrown? Whether this person was made unconscious? How many days this effect lasted on this or that person? It's not exactly how physics is done today, but Father Callan had to make do with what he had, I suppose. He was no nutty professor though. He was deeply connected with the world around him. Very often, he gave away almost his entire salary for the relief of the poor. As well as this, he had plans to power lighthouses and to electrify railways to better the world around him. And he was motivated in all of this by the very same faith that led him to celebrate mass each day. All of Father Callan's pioneering work in the study of electromagnetism was carried out not at the fringes of the life of the church, but in its institutional heart, in the curriculum of the National Seminary. Father Callan's example, like that of so many other Catholic scientists, 
is a witness to the enduring friendship between the Catholic Church and the natural sciences.